All right, this is, hello, this is the end of the uh, Avondale suite and rather than talking about aliens and things, we're going to talk about one of my real passions in life and that is pirate radio and broadcasting of free thought, energetic music and energy through the music with free format, creative, intelligent, fantastic, fun broadcasting which we don't have much of these days because it's all been taken over by the evil corporations who've got as much creativity as a blow on the head. Okay. Back in the days of the 1970s, uh, back in the days of the 1960s, the only radio that we had in the British Isles was state broadcasting and it was done by the Broken Biscuit Company called the BBC and uh, they only allowed, there were severe restrictions of the broadcasting of music and this went back to the 1930s where even in the 1930s when there was a massive explosion of all types of music and the big European stations were pumping out hundreds of kilowatts of stuff on the AM band or more accurately medium wave and also short wave and you could pick this up all over the place the only vestige of that which survived into the 1990s called Radio Luxembourg and that closed down and it was replaced effectively uh, RTL the people who own the um, the people who own RTL uh, also uh, owned the Astra satellites, they were the people who brought, brought in the Astra satellites which allowed Sky Television to do multi-channel television throughout Europe on a set of Astra satellites. So in essence the free format, the free thought music era of broadcasting, creative broadcasting and having a wonderful time was survived by the Astra satellite signals which Sky Television was an integral customer of which started way back in 1989. Now the point about this is the whole function and creativity of Sky Television is a direct derivation of what was going on in the 1960s with Radio Caroline and the pirate radio broadcasting era. Mm -hmm. The function of this was to break the monopoly of the BBC and there are much more serious reasons why that's even so, more, even so much more important and it's related to this thing called the black goo. Now the black goo is a substrate of the subconscious and essence of living intelligence on this planet that wishes to survive and what it's doing is it's accessing toxic uh, zones or toxic uh, elements of anything that's around that's against that and the first time I encountered the black goo was in pirate radio which was energy 106 FM which uh, we've got a few bits here still lying around as we dismantle all this and one of them is a is um, let's see we've got two little things here two little things here and another thing here and if you point the camera over to those lamps Kathy those lamps contain two of the 5.5 kilowatt grounded grid triode output valves of the Energy 106 transmitter. Okay. Now the point about the Energy 106 transmitter which broadcast from Mollahan, which was the same site as KISS FM from the 1980s, okay that's probably enough. Uh, those are made there because they're just there to remind me that we've done this because as time goes by well, one thing or another is finally dispatched off to the scrap heap and that's what really what we're doing now we're actually sending some artifacts from KISS FM and my pirate radio days of B96 Belfast pirate radio which I broadcast in Belfast from my flat in 65 South Parade for many years while I was at the BBC and had my good dear Master Blaster Terry Hooley broadcast out of there or with the Reggae Blaster and he broadcast from my flat in 65 South Parade all over Belfast on FM on 95.8 FM and uh, that was good fun. Uh, so he's just published a film which is Good Vibrations and uh, that's been made by the Broken Biscuit Company, a very good film which uh, details the era of pop music and freedom of thought and everything else of the 1970s. Now the point about Terry Hooley's book is, uh, and anybody in this era uh, would be wonderful if they came forward, in the 1960s Belfast was actually a hotbed of non-denominational creative thought and exciting creativity. Now if you go there 
if you went there in the late 60s and the 70s and 80s and 90s, the last place where you would ever think there was creativity and excite, excite, and excitement and cross community and people working together uh, is Belfast. And one of the main things that we did with KISS FM was to broadcast a high power focused signal of intelligence transfer sequencing into Belfast from Monaghan in 1987, 88 and we edged over a little bit into the early part of 1989 where we sort of kept the transmitters on for about three months as a sort of a signal uh, called K104. Uh, Anyway, the point about this is that this is part of an exciting era of broadcasting and these are the last bits of KISS FM and these are what's called NAB carts, these are NAB carts, so nowadays everybody uses MP3 and file servers and all sorts of things, but if you wanted something to actually work and you wanted to play a commercial, uh, like on a short cassette, this is actually a loop of tape which runs for this is about 30 seconds and uh, what I did was I initiated I was part of a thing called the intelligence transfer sequence which still remains secret now uh, the actual phrase I think comes from computer technology where you're transferring intelligence and that's quite in, quite interesting that that phrase is used in computer technology because you've also got things like human interface uh, for phrases and things like that but this, uh, when we were broadcasting on KISS AM, on 10.08 AM, uh, because the FM took a, a couple of months to get going, uh, we were transmitting all over Europe with a 5 kilowatt transmitter from Monaghan, on the middleton Monaghan border near Armagh. And that put out a very good signal on a sky wave. We also had a very good ground wave which got us into Belfast and we were on 1008 kilocycles which is one megahertz basically right in the middle of the AM band which is about the best part of the AM band in terms of propagation. Now the AM band is in Europe is designed so that you get good uh, distance propagation and what happened was uh, that signal was on the same frequency as Hilversum 3. Now Hilversum 3, which is a major Dutch uh, domestic service for Holland uh, and, and that part of the world, um, were very kind to actually come off the air at 10 o'clock Central European time. Now the point about Central European time was that means it was 9 o'clock British Standard Time or GMT. That meant there was nobody else on in Europe anywhere on that frequency. And that meant our little bitty transmitter, which was 5 kilowatts in Ireland, meant that the first hop of that signal would go into England, but also, depending on the tropospheric, atmospheric, the atmospherics, would blast free, un unhindered, because of amplitude modulated radio. If there's nothing else bigger around, you'll still hear it. And uh, that went right over to Norway and in central, into Central Europe. I mean, used to get requests from the Czech border, the behind the Iron Curtain. And this is our little phrase, which was very kindly taken off the real audio reel tapes that I prepared as the sort of engineer before the Tom Hardy, the station manager, got them. We were all building the station, and this was played off the reel to reel. And they took this little thing called Intelligence Transfer Sequence, and it was on this cart. And we've got a, an ITC built like a fucking battleship, brick shit house, solid as a rock, almost carved straight out of hard stainless steel and aluminium. The reason for this is these things can actually take quite a lot of torque to pull and the more tape you put in them you can actually put about 10 to 12 minutes of tape in that. Mm -hmm. So the point about this is this is was a broadcast industry standard for actually playing you, you take this thing, you shove it in there, and you press a button, and that's a proper button, alright? We're not talking about mouse clicks here. And we'll see if that plays. And we're not hearing it. Why am I not hearing it? Oh, that's because I've unplugged it. Well, what we do, we're about to pack up here, so I've actually unplugged the audio leads in the back of the thing, so we'll just plug those back in.
<laughs> okay. Well, this should come out of here. We're seeing it monitoring here on the uh, audio. This is an intelligence transfer sequence in progress. Okay, we'll uh, create a new file there. I might as well just dump that in. This is an intelligence transfer sequence in progress. And if you have a look, look, this is how the reel goes round. If you want to see that actually work, this is the actual reel rotating. It's fascinating technology here. We'll just stop this. But that's the uh, that's how it works. It runs around a loop. It's absolutely fascinating. This, if you <laughs> want to watch this amazing technology, and we'll play that again. Intelligence. This is an intelligence transfer sequence in progress. Nothing like keeping the levels absolutely spot on. <laughs> okay, we let that loop round and. Uh, We'll save this, and uh, just so it's there. What we're doing is all this is going to Europe, and uh, we're not going to have these ever again. So well, these are the last plays of these tapes. We haven't played any of this material for many years, so we're we're lucky to actually have them here at all, and we'll monitor the audio levels. And this was on a radio station called KISS FM. And this is a KISS FM cart that we used in our production studio. Normally we would label the cartridges with coated tape on the back. That's white. Uh, commercials and uh, run of day stuff would have maybe red or yellow. And then you would put the, um, you'd put the actual name on the label. Uh, for instance, this is a slightly more accurate label, but it's, it's typed in there. And uh, that's the length of time, intelligence transfer sequence and all that. And that, that's the way it was done in those days. But uh, as you can see, these are nice blue tapes. These are the higher quality ones. So after 25 odd years, these are still playing. Wow. And we're going to play the jingle from KISS FM. This is from Jam Productions. And uh, these were for the radio station K double I S F M Kiss or Kiss Keys FM in Los Angeles for Rick Dees and his team of great, great, wonderful people there. But like everything else, uh, there's nothing new in show business. So if it's a good name, use it. And those are the actual jingles we used on the um, test transmissions which we built and constructed and ran on reel-to-reel -reel tape that looped back and forth. And that was a way to do it and that was stuff that was sitting right beside the transmitter, the big ten and a half inch reel-to-reel -reel machine which had eight heads on it or six heads on it so it would play in both directions and loop and that was the, the way we did it in those days and this is another kiss jingle. That's actually my favourite kiss jingle and it suits a lot of music, it's got a lot of, the whole point about a jingle is that it shouldn't break format for the music you're playing. Mm. And this is a rule that is broken so many times in so many stations 
for instance, uh, the name Absolute is probably one of the worst names you give a radio station. Uh, Br British radio stations have a habit of calling themselves the most grotesque names, which means it's very difficult to say. Saying about looping tapes or something. About Absolute. Absolute, right. Okay, if you want to start. Come on, I'm starting. Uh, well, one of the things about radio station names is you want to say things which are catchy and easy to say, and sound come they come out sound the the sound comes out well when you speak it. For instance, probably some of the worst names you got are Radio Hallam, Radio Hallam, and Absolute Radio. The point about it is that you lose the start of the word because of the way the vowel sounds and the name. And on radio, uh, you've got to say the word that's going to come out so it catches people's ear. For instance, in the States you have NBC and ABC. Uh, but because NBC and ABC sound very similar, when you're listening to the radio and you're driving the thing, you don't know whether you're listening to an ABC station or an NBC station. So rather than saying ABC and NBC, what you do is say Radio NBC. You emphasize the first NBC. This is NBC. And then they, they have a little thing called a little jingle that went with it. So all these sort of things are there to catch, like two or three seconds. You know, got to be there to catch your name in the competitive market that they had in there. Now, of course, we didn't have that in this country. We had the BBC, and that was it. And so we had Radio Caroline, okay, and the, the word Caroline with the C, okay, the C is a K really, and so that comes out very well. And of course, that was after President Kennedy's daughter, Caroline. And that is a legend, and it's full of the most wonderful broadcasting we've ever heard. And one, one has to ask, in the great British democracy of free thinking and the spirit of keeping everything wonderful, a lot of people have to go on a radio ship uh, and pump out 50,000 watts on the AM band to play their best album track. That doesn't seem really logical. Uh, and uh, of course they, they pioneered a lot of the music of the 1960s and reprogrammed the psychotronic programming that was in the MK Ultra devised programming of the popular music industry of the 1960s, 70s and of course we've now got the, the things like very various popular music television programs which are there very carefully socially engineer people into a state of addiction and also keeping them in their place. Yeah. And that's why there's no good music coming out of these things and that's why any of these performers who have essentially sold their, their souls to the devil in this regard, some of them actually saying now, if they ever break from that little contract they get bumped off, one of them being John Lennon, one of them being Michael Jackson and others who've made that little mistake uh, so the point, the point about the whole music industry is there's a very serious control emphasis on it. Mm. Which is why radio stations which break that control emphasis are hounded out of existence and are called pirates. And that's what we did with KISS FM. We were a pirate and we did free thought radio with the intelligence transfer sequence which had, we played. And that was very, very popular. And that essence was transferred into the Sky Television um, situation. And we've had our stories about Sky Television and those who took control of that. And uh, we'll see how that goes. But that's part of the broadcasting issue. And that's why we're trying to raise £24 million to create an independent source of uh, information, news and discussion on broadcast, open format broadcasting. We know uh, the voice, the People's Voice production people at uh, Ike TV, as some people call it, they're trying to do their their bit and we send them our best wishes and all the rest of it and when they get going shortly we hope it's a big success but obviously this is going to be seen a long time after that happens so we wish it well uh, but we really do need it on the broadcast free to air system so uh, that's why we need a lot of dosh when other people might wake up about this it would be something that we really do need to do the whole point about KISS FM it broke the mold and it broke the matrix and uh, Certain organizations came to ask me to get certain things done, which I did. And uh, we started a sort of a peace process there, but that's another very large story. I mentioned the Terry Hooley thing. Terry Hooley was on my radio station, KISS FM, co-founded by a couple of colleagues of mine who've long since passed, God bless them. And uh, we were told about the other day, and these are some of the artifacts going through the artifacts, while we clear up here. 
This is a, another valve. It's a thing called a 4CX1000A. And we had a little bitty transmitter uh, which was originally designed at another frequency, but we got about 1.8 kilowatts out of two of these things. Not very efficient. Uh, blew up a few times. All good fun. That kept us on the air with KISS FM in 1988, and it also kept Energy 106 and Magic 105 on air in Northern Ireland from the KISS transmitter site up until about 2004, 2005. And that's another one. This is what a valve looks like. This is a this will produce uh, a thousand watts or so uh, on FM, but uh, you can use that on AM. And uh, we have a little, this is a little baby brother, okay? And if you just hold it a second, we'll go and get its big, its big sister. <laughs> what a pole, sir! Okay, do you want to uh, start again? Oh, Kathy, this is its uh, little sister, this is big sister here. This will produce 5,000 watts of audio. Push pull, you need two of them. And I've rigged this up. Uh, what happens here is that um, with these kind of valves, the little bit in the middle is called the anode, and that's connected to this bit here. And when this is running, there's about 5,000 volts there, and 5,000 volts there, and uh, this will actually glow cherry red, right? It'll glow this sort of color here, okay? And if you're wanting to push it a little bit more, it'll be a little bit amber, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, because that's actually practically at an extremely hot temperature, the uh, special glass around it is placed well away from the actual um, metal but you can see these two glass valves apart from very, being very dusty because uh, they've been uh, in storage for a long time and uh, you know these are uh, a little bit dark because what happens is the, the metal inside is so hot it begins to evaporate in the vacuum inside there and gets placed on the inside of the glass okay. These valves have been run to absolute max, and uh, but uh, in order to sort of sort of show that this is still alive, we've got this on a transformer, and this is here just to sort of make this into a bit of a trendy lamp. But uh, now there it is, lighting up. Wow. And that's what's called the filaments, and the filaments are there to provide the electrons so that these things can work like a diode, a complex diode. It's um, a modulated diode, a triode. This, I think, is actually a pentode. So it provides an awful lot more focus and gain to produce those watts that we need. Uh, this would have been used, uh, this, this is, would have been used in AM transmitters for. Uh, for broadcast of uh, this would this came out of a 10,000 watt rig, but again these were only run at half power, so that it would run a lot in a lot of years. And, uh, and this is the final valve, the final sort of thing that we used. Uh, again, the basic principle here is you've got a vacuum inside, and this is now the glass. Is this has replaced the glass, this whole metal enclosure has replaced the glass, so basically in the insides there's all sorts of complicated rare earth metals here like thorium and all sorts of things in here which means that these things are pretty toxic, you don't want to break them open. For instance, the ceramic here is bonded to this metal with a bonding thing called beryllium oxide which they use in transistors which is totally lethal and carcinogenic and you don't want to, you don't want to cut one of these things open with an angle grinder, let's put it that way. Right. And this is part of the thing about electronics and the solid state electronics industry. 
uh, and the electronic industry as a whole are using some pretty crucial elements to get these atoms and get the electrons and the exchange of, of uh, charged particles and to amplify and cause modulation. This is um, basically designed as a coolant. This is where you pump lots of air through the middle of that. I don't know if you can get that. And once again, you put about 7,000 volts. We put about 7,000 volts on this. This is a YE148, and we had it running. A total maximum p potential power of this is about 11 kilowatts, 11,000 watts. On Energy 106, we could only get about 7.5 out of it because um, it was really just replacing the 5,000 watt valves, which gave us another 2.5 kilowatts, which gave us an effective radiated power of about 800 kilowatts on our antenna stack. On the days of KISS FM we did about 1.2 megawatts, that's 1200,000 watts. Um, so that's, uh, and this was rated on May the 28th, 2004, and we got it back, and then uh, the final, it was then again on the 29th of October, 2004, and it's fi this was then taken, this particular one, and we got another one, and we got ourselves going again, and we ran till about um, May, until February, I think, 2005, which made Energy 106 the final m megawatt border blaster, which pumped dance music radio into Belfast. And this is, again, repeating the theme, that there's something in dance music, something which involves the emotion of dancing and happiness and all that sort of stuff. These nasty people want to control, they don't want you to have a good time, they don't want you to be free and have your mind free to expand, reach levels of consciousness, higher levels of consciousness state, and that's what the whole beef is in this thing about pirate radio. Uh, most of the stations which go on the air, the vast majority are producing popular, or producing their genre of music that they want to hear, but the broadcast stations, once taken over by the corporations and basically Ofcom, shut all creativity down. They actually, in the Broadcasting Act, the actual leg legislation, the use of rhythmically amplified beat music and how it's performed and how you have to have junctions between songs and how you can and can't say things or run certain things. There's got to be a certain interruption of the, of the way that the theme works with the music. For instance, in the Pirates, we would run maybe three records in a row, themed together so they'd build up to something. Now, re you know, it's relatively rare to have that happen in broadcasting. There's got to be some kind of break, there's got to be certain types of songs put in there, so you break it up, certain songs with certain riffs in it, certain types of, in, there's, it, you have to have in certain songs, you've got to have a certain type of musical instrument playing a particular type of riff, or it's got to be a saxophone or a guitar, it's got to somehow break the song up, so there's lots of, uh, and the, uh, the application of the rhythm and the beat, there's lots of science behind it, there's lots of mind control science to exploit that in popular music and to bring you up to a certain level but not to bring you past or be up or be below those sort of levels of consciousness. So the popular music scene is very complex. Uh, I mean, it, so the mysteries about getting a hit isn't, you know, certain things you do, it'll work, right? So, um, and then this is again, as we close out the Avondale suite here. Uh, basically the reason why I'm doing this is because a lot of my colleagues are now dead. And uh, this is the first time a lot of this stuff's taken out of its wrapper. This is the first KISS FM st car sticker we have. And um, this is KISS, and that's FM 103.7 and AM 1008. And we had our... Uh, voice IDs done by a fantastic guy called Charlie Van Dyke and if we get I, the Charlie Van Dyke jingles are pretty tired on these machines so we'll see if we got one left now we're really going to have to see if this is going to play these literally are these particular partic particular carts are really in their last play stage they do need to be repaired but this is Charlie Van Dyke he was one of the most brilliant uh, voiceover artists from Los Angeles. And he had one of the richest, finest voices you can get in broadcasting. And crucially, he voiced his, his 
his tracks in a way that you can actually splice and take different words out and make different phrases with the same voice, which is it, uh, superb. So what he did was, when we were starting up KISS FM 103.7, he gave us a couple of free phrases to let us launch the station. And we'll see how this is going to play. This could absolutely sound like dreadful as the tape doesn't go across the heads properly. We'll see. A radio station designed to play the hottest new music. A radio station that will have the feel, the tempo, and the beats to match your life. Right now, you're sharing the beginnings, the sample of a radio station of the future. Tell your friends about the remarkable FM. 103.7 KISS FM. Now that was a wee bit over mod, as we would say. In other words, it was too high level going into the computer. But we'll see if we can actually adjust that. We're going to just see if we can do... Um, see if we can just bring that down a bit. That, that's... Uh, See if that's going to work. This was the the phrase is that this is the kind of stuff we played on our startup, so that we uh, would able to, to play the kind of music that the audience we expected were going to want to hear, and uh, then the uh, sales team could go around selling the radio station and hearing this come out. And this was only played for the month or so that we were on our and this is, we'll just see if it's going to work. We'll just go into record. This is a kiss and oh, brandy. No, it's not going to work. That's it. That's it. That's the last time you're going to hear that. We'll see if there's anything else we can do. That was it. That was the last play out of that cart. We'll see if there's another one. That's when the uh, the pressure. Uh, that's when the pressure pads. That's when the pressure pads. After 1987, we're talking 20. How many years are we talking? I think we're talking 25 years. That's given up on live TV. This is see, see this got play. Kiss FM all over County Armagh now. Let's see if that's better work. This is a Kiss FM. That was the end of that. Kiss FM, all over County Armoire, now. Ooh, let's can see that really uh, war warble. There's, there's, if you want to see the... Uh... Kiss FM, all over County Antrim, now. Now, uh, you can see from this waveform what we call flutter. Okay, there's a little bit of, and you can see from the edge of it that it's a little bit over mod, but uh, that, that's, that's, uh, that's one of the disadvantages of the cart cartridge system, is that when you're dealing with a piece of tape that's looping over itself with graphite, it's got to be absolutely smooth, no impedances at all, and when you get a, a, a fuzzy piece of foam pressure pad at the back that's uh, after 25 years decided to expire, uh, that's what that's what it sounds like, and that's why these machines are built like brick shit houses because they've got a motor in there which is like this wide, and it will pull that tape no matter what. And even after that, uh, that's a that's just about playing as last. Thing. Now these things here also were where you had triple stack players of these, which means you'd have the same motor at the at the bottom with a capstan that long and uh, three of them and you'd bang three tapes in there play them around and then you'd also be able to record secondary to, uh, prim primary secondary uh, secondary and tertiary cues so that when the particular track or music track finished was you better play music on these uh, that would uh, when the song finished it would automatically trigger the next one and, and trigger the next one 
So you had automated commercial radio would be able to use a whole pile of cartridges like commercials, uh, station IDs, and they'd be in these massive machines full of cartridges and uh, robots taking the cartridges in and out and all the rest of it, and they would be able to uh, play automated radio. Of course, you know, that was done in the analog days with literally robots. And the same procedure happened in television where videotapes replaced these things and they were shoved into beta uh, machines, beta SP uh, cassette players and with barcodes and all that. And that's how automated tele commercial television was pioneered. And Sky Television did that with the first Sony robot, robot, com robot control uh, tape players. They had barcodes on the labels of the tapes and you could have a tape with a, with a commercial lasting 30 seconds or a sting or whatever it is or uh, a whole movie lasting like 90 minutes and they actually literally took the tapes out of the the library rack and shoved them into an actual cassette machine uh, they were some of them were side fed or front fed depending on the type of technology we're going to use but this is basically as mechanical as you can get when it comes to actually playing automated, programmed, formatted broadcasting and that's the way it was done. Of course nowadays you have a file servers and it's just done boom 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 with little problems. Uh, but to keep those mechanics going, this is another example of the actual technology we used in 1987. This is actually the um, the 100 watt FM PA board for KISS FM 103.7 which we had in 1987 and uh, this is the actual circuit board uh, that is uh, KISS FM 103.7 October 1987 it was designed by a wonderful uh, guy called Piers Easton who was in the Pirates in those days and Pier Piers was responsible for uh, a lot of things one of them was the KISS FM in London and this was a 150 watt PA so we ran that at 130, 140 watts, which basically is flat out on the transistor that was in there, which is gone. It's long since expired, but we had a transistor, one single transistor there, and that was bolted to a big hunk of heat sink, and it was in a transmitter on a 19-inch rack uh, style thing, and uh, that had forced air going through it and it took about 10 watts in and gave us 148, 145 watts out all perfectly clean and properly uh, properly filtered of course and that started KISS FM and that ran on a, I think a 28 volt power supply I think so 28 volt power supply is about 20 amps or something anyway this finally met its maker on November the 29th 2003 and that's a souvenir of KISS FM, the megawatt station that broadcasted to Belfast from Monaghan in 1987, October. We didn't get the FM on until quite some time later because we had uh, a sort of a minor problem, like a tower falling down, taken down, so we couldn't go on the air. But uh, we effectively finally launched as a commercial radio station in April 1988 and closed down in uh, December 30th, 19. 88 and uh, as we say kept the megawatt on running for about three months just in case you know and it was after that time that we finally came back on the air as energy 106 in 1986 and uh, that was when the legislation was still technically illegal it was still a case to answer for the Irish legislation and there still is because it's in violation of the Irish Constitution but this is when free format people from the actual country of origin set up radio stations to cater for a need in their area or their, the wider community whereas the imposed corporate uh, multinationals tile of I mean most of the stations in Ireland are now owned by foreign by foreign concerns of some kind or another and uh, they're not interested in the in the audience they're just interested in in maximizing a certain profit and pushing certain commercial products at a loss perhaps into those areas, certain adverts are allowed on, certain adverts are not allowed on. This is all part of the sort of mind control agenda on population management systems. And uh, that's about it. And uh, I think this is probably one of my last things I'm going to say. Uh, 
again, my really good friend of mine, long passed away now, a guy called Roland Burke, was the uh, production studio engineer at KISS at Big D and um, low great stations which came out of Ireland, Big D Radio 1977, uh, it derived from Radio Dublin and that was a long history of stations which anybody who's uh, felt or been involved with those radio stations uh, would really know what a wonderful thing it was. This is the last phrase I'm going to say on this and uh, we're going to play it from the cart. This is all going to Holland, a freight, freight, Monday I think. And this is it from the Avondale suite, from the big reel to reel. We'll switch it on. It actually works. It actually plays. This thing moves. Well, there it is. And, uh, Anyway, that's it. That, uh, that actually plays. There, a noise comes out of it. And this is on the monitor the PA. And it was just in there. And that's actually a safety copy from the car that we played of Billie Jean uh, because it involves commercial music we're not going to play it but it was a mix by Roland Burke we mixed four or five versions of the Billie Jean themed songs and put them together and that was broadcast on Radio Nova and we take our hat off to uh, Roland Burke and all the other great people who've since passed away and so um, this is this is me on the radio on KISS FM 1.2 megawatts and 103.7 and this is a little snippet that uh, Roland took out of one of my tapes that I never broadcast live I was once the station launched that was that was it and uh, I think I actually they think they actually picked this up on a commercial I was voicing one of the very few I voiced for Kiss FM oh, 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 we're drool today anyway there it is out of my wonderful fidelity uh, computer speakers here tucked behind the screens <laughs> and uh, that's it from the Avondale suite, and uh, I think that's still recording, is it? And uh, C'est la vie from Miles and my pirate um, era. Very interesting. And we have to uh, see what we're going to do as we approach a very critical time in our, our existence. We need to have an independent source of information available to people and that's got to be done with a completely secure independent network properly financed and if there's anybody out there who thinks that uh, humanity should survive and the planet should survive and actually realizes that there's a serious threat that it won't okay it's time to act now right thank you miles that was so interesting Okay, I'm taking my anorak off now. Okay. <laughs> Art cart was my show's introduction for Big D Radio in 1979, 1980. We'll play it. This is Shuttle Launch Control, and announcement follows in 30 seconds. Super Chuck. This is theme one from Radio One, you don't hear it anymore. You might hear me speaking now. No. I might have spoken over this. Probably the only decent thing the BBC has ever done. And that's it. It's jam. Oh, we'll see, that's... This is a bit low level. This is actually the first space shuttle countdown that didn't launch. Oh. And uh, this hasn't got pressure pads, so you're not hearing the audio off the tape. But when it's when we can actually boost this on the computer, we'll be able to yeah. hear that public service announcement. We 
do you want? It's very low level, this. Probably played later. I can boost it. Very low. Coming off the head at about uh, 10 dB. That dates it at about 1983. Okay. This is this is a one-time only play. We'll just see how this. Ah, oh, that's it. This is, this, that's where it's finished. So that's the complete loop. Anyway, those were uh, my opening IDs when I did the FM, the FM late night slot on Big D Radio, which was Q98 FM. Okay. And uh, the phrase, don't let us down, is from the closed down Radio Nova, and it's the name that they came by a guy called Tony Allen, who was a brilliant and brilliantly creative individual from Radio Caroline, Radio North Sea, Sunshine Radio, Big D Radio. And um, that was... So I've got this on auto, so it's self-peak limiting, so we'll see what happens. And uh, he's another guy who died of throat cancer. He lived up in Camden, and he was his funeral was in um, Westminster Cathedral, not Westminster Abbey. And the, Chris Carey, Bobby Dale, and Ronan O'Reilly were there to, uh, to witness uh, uh, Tony Allen pass away and he was cremated at the crem crematorium down at um, the Barnes okay. and he was on the great ship radio Caroline Radio North Sea and way back in 1979 he was on um, Radio Sun Sunshine Radio but also Big D Radio and this is a kind of mix of people really creative people that we had mm. in, in that era which simmed together in Dublin on the North Sea on the Irish border to our regret, we didn't have Tony Allen uh, at KISS FM because there was a couple of incidents which meant that the rest of the crew didn't want him there, but uh, that would have been a fantastic thing to have there at KISS FM. Anyway, this is uh, the Spacker music, just as my show would have started on FM where we did about six hours a night. And then I recorded on a C120 cassette and that would repeat. And out there somewhere, people might have a cassette of miles on your radio. Uh, and uh, there's some good energy coming off this tape at the moment, but let's say it's a bit low level. In other words, what's, what's happening there, and what's happening there has been corrected by the computer to bring the levels up. What we're listening to here are the uh, replay heads. It's still minus three, so it's not, it's not too bad. But we'll let that, and we'll probably run for the whole five minutes. This is the last play of this car. And then we go and uh, pack things up. Okay. And get out and go to the Oxford Road Suite. Yes. <laughs> okay. The thing about this is you've got to wait for the thing to play to the end of its loop. The other machines we have have fast forward on them. You can spin them forward quick. Let's see what that does. We've done it on our levels. We 
dangerous thing to do this. Oh, let's see. Wow and flutter there, tape noise, uh, levels all over the place, coming off a, a slushy 19, uh, whatever the hell it is, cart without the pressure pads. Uh, so uh, we didn't get quite an even playback there, but that's it's recovered off the. Uh, that's it recovered off this cart, which was played way back in the 1980s, and I think I've got that somewhere on it reel to reel somewhere but that's about 20 splices of short phrases and in those days you actually cut the tape and stuck them together okay that's it all right then 